Thank you for coming. Fortunately, uh, this is uh, what the first meeting in three now that we haven't had a raging blizzard. We have to go, go through. The meeting's not over yet. The meeting's not over yet. We might get the blizzard after all. It, it's uh, very funny. One thing we've learned in this game over the past three years is you've got to be able to adapt to things. Like when they are going to have a rummage sale where you have your meetings and all of a sudden they occupy all of the room. So that's why we're out here today. Uh, the rummage sale is taking up all the room and uh, we should be back to normal uh, immediately. Anyway, uh, let's uh, everybody in comfortable position. Yeah, let's bow our head in prayer. Oh, my. take in what they're telling us, be able to retain it, be able to apply it in our life. We just ask that you empower us to uh, be good stewards of the Constitution and this wonderful uh, nation that you created and you inspired. And we uh, just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Very refreshing. Now, uh, we have another volunteer to give uh, the police and the Pledge of Allegiance. Anyway, this is home, 
and I, I care about what happens next. We have, in my estimation, uh, the best opportunity today that we've had in decades to really make positive strides for, for our county. Um, I am a firm believer that, that having success in something is a combination of the right leadership and the right climate. Uh, our founding fathers were a great example of that. We have the right climate in the world and the right people in the right place at the right time to make a real difference in, in, in the way human history went. And I'm not comparing myself to a founding father, but I am saying that in Medina County, the climate is, is right. Um, what we don't have is the right leader in place there. Uh, I believe I'm that leader. I have a business background and a nonprofit background and an educational background that lends itself to doing the right thing. The second thing I'll, I'll hit on, and then I'll, I'll take questions if you like, is uh, common sense. I'm a common sense guy. I'm a business guy. I'm a, I'm a normal, normal guy. Most people um, believe generally in common sense. Uh, I don't think there's enough common sense in our government at, at every level. Uh, federal, state levels, I don't have much control over, but at the county level, I think we lack some of that also. Um, and when I talk about common sense, I mean things like creating an initiative like the state has to figure out how to reduce redundant departments and redundant regulation and extra taxes and things that we don't need that don't service us or that are redundant services. Uh, as commissioner, I, I intend to put together a common sense initiative that's a panel of folks, business people and uh, government leaders that will sit down and hear citizens or business people uh, on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, whichever it, it ends up being, hopefully not weekly, hopefully we don't have that many problems. Uh, but uh, they'll sit down, they'll, they'll listen to uh, the redundancy or the problems that the county government has the We'll fix it. We'll absolutely we'll sit down as commissioners and we'll take action and we'll fix it. Uh, I don't think that's ever been done. They're doing it right now at the state level and it's having a lot of success. You come in and you have a state problem, we'll pass it up to the state. You come in and you have a federal problem, we'll probably just tell you to forget about it. There's nothing you can do. But uh, no, the other thing about, about common sense is coordination. Um, I think that we spend too much money. The county government spends too much money. The city government spends too much money. And a lot of that is because they don't work together. Talk about climate and leadership and the combination of the two. That's what I was talking about. Today, right now, we have a better opportunity to put cities and townships and those groups of people in the same room and make a difference. We have a much better opportunity today with the right leadership to bring those folks together to reduce the redundant costs, to, to combine departments, to make sure that uh, 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 law enforcement offices can, can talk, uh, and so on. Um, we didn't always have that climate. We're fat and happy. Governments were making plenty of money. We were growing by leaps and bounds. Medina County is 21% larger than it was uh, 20 years ago. And so there wasn't any onus or emphasis necessarily on all the savings mechanisms that you need, efficiencies that are absolutely important to government. Um, we have climate for that now. We have a, a difficult leader in place that has not been a, 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 a uniter. It's been kind of a, a divider. I'm that guy. I uh, work a lot of nonprofit groups. Let me tell you, uh, nonprofits are, are had to work with others over and over and over in board scenarios to bring people together and done a heck of a good job. Um, I urge you to take a look at some of, this, some of the work that our foundations have done. Uh, and I would bring a lot of that to the commissioner's office, and I think it's exactly what we need right now. There are a handful of other common sense concepts, but you can't really define common sense. Basically, it's taking a look at a situation and doing the right thing. When you know what the right thing is, it's easy to do it. Um, we don't have a lot of that in government governments constantly spend other people's money. I believe government's my money. Government's my money and it's your money and it's your money. And if you treat it like your money, you're going to spend it like your money. If you treat it like somebody else's money, you're going to spend it like somebody else's money. And I think we can do a lot better job of that. <coughs> we have a combination of the right climate, the right environment, and the wrong leaders right now. And I think that we can put the right climate and the right leaders together and really, really have an impact on, on the future. Um, so thanks for the, the few minutes. I'm, I'm, Take questions if anybody has them. Uh, nobody has questions. That means everybody agrees or everybody disagrees. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, uh, the, another uh, county commissioner um, candidate, uh, Steve Henley. Did you want to say a few words? Sure. What, microphone. Or? All right. Good morning. And thank you for the opportunity to just say a couple words. This is uh, I'm going on my 16th year. I've been there since 1997. Um, I've hopefully seen some of the literature that I've got out there. Uh, I 
I do have a record of accomplishments that I've been involved. I, I did my basic background, I'm a college professor. I teach at a, at a college. I've tried to keep my hand in, in there. And uh, believe it or not, uh, I'm encouraged by our youth. I mean, I've said this before, I think before this organization, I'm encouraged that we've got uh, youth, particularly at the community college level where I, I teach these working class people. They're, they, want, uh, they want to better themselves. They're working hard and they want a good education. And I teach uh, history as well as political science. And I do these surveys and so forth uh, with them just to see where their attitude's at. And largely they're conservative. Largely they're, they, they know what the values are. Regardless of whether you're labeled, you know, Democrat, Republican, or independent, whatever, their basic values and morals are, are with us. They're with the mainstream. And I think that that's what's encouraging. They know, they know really truly the value. That's the one thing that keeps me invigorated in my job as commissioner, is I go back to the classroom and I have that enthusiasm, open to ideas, and, and learning to that the, the best way to achieve anything is not by yourself, is with other people and working with the, uh, with the communities. I'm a, a local government guy. I believe the best government is that closest to the people. That's really where, where it's at. As you get higher up, unfortunately, uh, you get more bureaucratic. Uh, you, you, lose, you lose rights. Uh, there's a, the concentration of power, and uh, unfortunately, it's unwieldy. Uh, it's expensive. So um, I, I certainly uh, would encourage, and I do encourage, uh, changes in, in how we do uh, the local government as well as county government. And uh, if, you, if you look, there's a number of initiatives out there that local governments are, are being forced to. They need to, and they are consolidating. They are sharing services. The economics are forcing that upon them. And fortunately, the, the people that are in charge, those the voters, have elected people, local leaders, to encourage that. To look at that, that, and there's a number of things going on behind the scenes. Uh, there's a dispatch study that will be, 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 be hopefully being done uh, this year that will look to, to consolidate. Look at the number of, of, of uh, our dispatching stations. Look how we can consolidate or even work together uh, to make it much more efficient. Uh, there's a lot of areas in that government. Our county government, uh, we've, since 2008, we have five and a half million dollars less than we have. The county government hasn't had a tax increase since 1971 for the general fund. That doesn't mean there hasn't been agencies out there. You have MRDD, which goes on the ballot every now and then. In fact, they'll probably be on the ballot this fall. They'll be asking for a tax increase. Um, commissioners, well, we have to put it on the ballot and let the people make the decision. The health department, uh, the district library, the county home, all those, the, the real value is that all those are decided by the people. It's ultimately up to the people to decide whether they're spending the money they should or they shouldn't, or they should, should be spending less. That's really the value of the IC in our system. We, the checks and balances that we've had at the local level are outstanding. Unfortunately, the checks and balances at the state level don't exist, and even less so at the federal level. So that's why, uh, certainly, I, I encourage these uh, participation in this kind of group. Uh, I know there's a 912 group down in Wadsworth. Likewise, they have the same concern. I'm encouraged to see the general population take serious government for a change. When I'm, uh, early on as a professor, Unfortunately, too many people just think of this as Jason kind of said, you know, when you're, when you're fat and happy, things are going along, government doesn't mean a whole lot. But you know what? It means a whole lot. Because we've seen so too many things turn the other way. And if we don't turn it back, I'm afraid we're, we have some dire circumstances here. But I'm encouraged by our youth, I'm encouraged by my activism, uh, by what I see as commissioner. And I, uh, I just ask you politely, uh, I do have some uh, literature there. Uh, we uh, like your vote on uh, March 6th and continue my work as a county commissioner for the next term. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, there's actually, well, three commissioner seats. The wow. first one is yeah. during a, a gubernatorial year is elected, is the January 1st seat. Yeah. That's what uh, Commissioner Sharon Ray used to occupy before she decided not to run again. Uh, I am running for the January 2nd uh, seat. Uh, and then the third seat is being occupied currently by Commissioner Geisman. That's uh, Jason Stevens running for that. So basically we have one, two, three, January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd. Uh, but we, January 2nd and 3rd, run during the presidential year. So basically, you at least have one commissioner, uh, you know, that, that in, in a back that will be then working, uh, or at least uh, working up until the next gubernatorial election uh, in, in two years. So that's that's how that works. Uh, on the January second seat, Pat Geisman is, is, is uh, currently occupying the January third seat. Yes. Thirty seconds. Can you tell me what the day? Can I tell you what the, the what? What the day? What the time of the day? Of a commissioner. 
Oh, I, 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 <laughs> 30 seconds, I'll just say, uh, part of it's in the office, part of it is out. I mean, we've got all these departments and all these other things going on. County <coughs> Commissioner's job, it, it's actually the Board of County Commissioners. So all of us are engaged in different departments. We have liaison relationships to about a dozen different departments. Each of us have oversight for other elected officials. The nature of government is we don't have the authority, we're legislative authority, but we have executive authority. We do have uh, checks and balances, and we also have separation of powers. And we've got each of those, so we commissioners work with those other individuals. We belong to a number of boards and commissions that have been set up by state law as well as by local, uh, local choice uh, to how to, to administer things. We're, uh, so a typical commissioner is dealing with those issues plus phone calls. Uh, just uh, last week I got, a, I got a letter from a 85-year-old lady in Wadsworth that was uh, had a heart attack, had or excuse me, a stroke. Her son-in-law is in prison for uh, beating his wife and she wants me to help him get, out, get him out. That's a tough call, uh, but she indicates in her letter uh, that she has some problems. So I had job, I had our office older adults go out and, and, and do a visit. Uh, also then adult, adult, adult protective services came in to see if there's anything they can do to check with her, see if she, she needs some help, because really what she was, it was a cry for help. Yes, she needed her son, but unfortunately, you know, it's gonna be there for a while, nothing we can do, but we can hopefully keep it in our house. So those are the kind of things we do as commissioners. We answer the calls, we try to find the right public services that are out there to help those individuals. And if it's not us, what, what, what uh, nonprofit? As Jason said, we have a wealth of nonprofits in this county. And those are the people that we also, I serve on a number of boards historically, and then I know where to, to refer them to, if they need Salvation Army, or United Way, or Enhanced Foundation, who they can contact to get that. So we as commissioners, we really, I say it's divide and conquer. Every day we get, we get together once a week, but then we basically have our, our, our jobs that we do in areas, and we try to go out and try to, to, to manage the, the county system, as well as uh, good relationships with our adjoining counties, I was down in Columbus on a solid waste uh, committee with the Commission Association on Thursday because they're looking to revise and change the laws that currently govern our CPF. Uh, there's a law pending that would essentially eliminate all our entire recycling program. So we've got to sit down and have some input on that. So that's the kind of thing we do. <coughs> yes? Do you know anything about the Lodi Library? The Lodi Library? I know I've talked to a librarian down there uh, with their structural uses. There's a, I'll just say there's a ton of lawyers that have billable time on this one, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and it, I, I say the lawyer to engineer ratio is not very good there, because uh, right now they have like one engineer architect and the rest are just all lawyers, and, and it is, it's a mess. It's, it is absolutely a mess. And uh, there's no doubt that the, there was a problem with the design, and they're trying to deal with it without having to go through, uh, I'll, I'll just say, lengthy and costly litigation. But even then, that involves a lot of lawyers. So, uh, like so the last I heard is there they at least have uh, some limited access, uh, and, and, and but it's going to be a while before that gets straightened up, unfortunately. Their hope, their the goal, according to Carol Powell, who's the uh, uh, chief librarian over everything, uh, she, she said their hope is to be able to get that resolved and then work out the details of who pays what later. And that's I think that's kind of like the, they're all interested in getting that back to the, to the public use uh, and then worry about it whose fault it was later. Finger pointing, uh, it's, it's, you know, it comes down to that, it's kind of tough. So that's where we're at with that. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. I noticed that Brunswick um, School System has a um, issue mm -hmm. for our renewal. What is that for? It's not been in the papers? It, it's a knowing, I, 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 uh, the only being a resident of Brunswick, I know that it's, 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 it's uh, operating uh, and it's a, it's a no increase, no new taxes, it's just a renewal. Of, so, of what though? Of, of an operating level. Which means what? Well, it's for the teacher's salaries, okay, it's for the, it's for that, it's, for the, it's not a capital improvement. So that, that obviously sales tax takes care of that, uh, but this is just for their operating, uh, their regular expenses okay. and, and, and so forth. But it's not an increase and they haven't had an increase in a number of years. It's, okay. Uh, I know I've seen the signs all over the place, and, they, and actually in the post they have an insert, in the Brunswick Post, so uh, uh, they the came out this uh, today, uh, they, they have an information piece in there. Okay. So okay. it's a two-pager, you can look <laughs> at it, um, so, yeah. The pastor at my church, not sure on this, okay. he didn't specifically tell me this, but that renewal is supposed to be a permanent renewal, 
that's not going to be up for renewal again. It's just going to automatically well, renew year after year. I don't think you can renew an emergency levy into a, into a, in a permanent levy. I don't think that's legal. I, I, I don't think that's the case. But you don't know. I, I don't know. I can, I, I, can, I, can, I can check, but I don't think the law allows you to go from a, a temporary, a five-year, to and then say you're just going to renew it permanently. I don't think the law permits that uh, when it comes to school levies. Although I'll just say school finance and le levies are kind of just a speciality more of a, a, a uh, well, that's that, that's a state rep question more than it is a kind of commissioner question. Uh, but I my, I believe that the, that basically that because uh, county couldn't do it. We have a five-year uh, levy for McDat, right? Uh, uh, yep. right. And we couldn't renew it. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to say you only campaign once and then you keep going on. But no, I, I'm a firm believer that the people ought to have it. Every couple of years, they need to check in with the voters and say, are we spending the money right? Do you have a choice? Will we continue it or not? Or, or do whatever. Uh, but I don't think that they can go to a permanent. I really yeah, don't. It, I'll check. Well, I just want to say one other thing. On this. Sure. A couple of houses in my neighborhood, they couldn't wait to put signs out to vote no on issue two. They certainly got those signs out to vote yes. Oh, OK, yeah. I can't wait to vote no on it. I'm sorry. <laughs> understand, understand. I, I believe me, there were a, a lot of us that were there that, uh, especially the kind of when we looked at the amount of money that would be saved, and, 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 and frankly, that some very modest uh, proposals and recommendations. My hope is the state legislature will come back and be able to make some of those changes, because we certainly would like to. Uh, I, I, I have no per personal problem with the bump it up, how much we put for retirement. That goes to it's like, okay, I'll go pay 12% or whatever, but people that have the buyout. That, that doesn't happen in our county. We don't do that. But unfortunately, other places do. So I just, what can you say? Yes? I just wanted to validate you know, what you said about the young people. Yeah. I took a course about a year ago with the Cuyahoga Community College, mm -hmm. local and state government level. What was it? I wasn't, most of the students, not all of them, there's a lot of them going to get the you know, liberal side rubber stamps yeah. just because of their age. But the ones that were really active in the class were the I went in that class thinking I was going to be the only conservative in there. About half those kids in there were, they, they just keep making things. Yeah. Plus, also, just while I'm at it, uh, me and my wife went to the right to life thing in Washington back on the 23rd. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot, a lot of them were Catholic kids on the field trips, but there's a huge amount of young people there. I, it, to me, I'm sure, maybe not, but I'd almost say half the people there in Washington were high school, college age. That's great. And I was really impressed with that. So, you know, we don't want to automatically well, they entered my classroom. They, they introduced to Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh and all the others. So Thank you very much. That's good to hear that there's good news from the younger uh, generation. And uh, I continue to be reminded that there aren't that many here. <clears throat> really need to figure out uh, ways of reaching out and uh, starting to pull the younger generation into the so-called Tea Party movement. We're best sleeping, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next stop is uh, uh, we have to introduce here is for County Sheriff uh, Tom Miller. Did you want to uh, take the uh, podium or the uh, microphone? Sure. All right. Thanks for letting me follow Steve Hanley. It's always a pleasure. I want to start off with something I heard last Sunday at church. There was a, an atheist fishing in the Loch Ness Lake. And along came a Loch Ness monster, threw him up in the air. He was out of his fishing boat. He prayed to God to be saved. And the Loch Ness monster disappeared. He landed in his boat. The water was calm and everything was great. So he started fishing again. Finally, he heard a voice and was God. Do uh, you have anything to say to me? He said, Can you give me a minute? I didn't even believe in a lot of this monster before. <laughs> so I tried to figure out how to tie this in with anything I had to say. How we tied it in the church on Sunday was that how do we have faith without really having those physical signs? I'm asking you to elect me for the first time to share. And you really don't know me or know me that well what I stand for. So briefly, I'll tell you a little bit about who I am. I'm uh, Tom Miller. I've been married for 40 years. I have three adult children and four grandchildren. I served in the Navy. I got out of the Navy. I went to school on the GI Bill while working in 
realized I wanted to become a law enforcement officer. The place to hire me was Brunswick. I went there and I continued my education. Well, getting my ship changed, I was able to work towards my master's degree and continue to focus on law enforcement. Uh, I believe, this is what I believe, that we have to balance ourselves between serving our families, our church, and our communities. And at different times in our life, we have different opportunities to do so. Right now, I have that opportunity to serve even longer, and I say by longer, harder hours as a sheriff because of the balance I have in my family. I have their support, my children are grown, and they know what it's like. They know what it's like for me to have to do long hours and to, to be able to serve. So I have that balance right now to move forward to serve our community more, while still not neglecting the family or, or my church. Uh, I believe I have the integrity to make a good sheriff for you. I believe that I have the knowledge and experience. I have 26 years of law enforcement experience, 10 years of uh, non-law enforcement experience within protective services, having to balance budgets that are about $10 million, having to manage scores of people, some in the union, some not in the union, having to work to maintain the appropriate amounts of uh, money and try to remain cost effective. The private sector was a little ahead of government in trying to remain cost effective. We are working towards that now. And it also impacts on law enforcement. We have limited budgets and we need to move forward while not neglecting our communities and our individuals. And the other belief I have, and I want to share this one because it's very important to me, to be a police officer, to be a law enforcement official in the United States is a privilege. The reason it's a privilege is it's a complicated country. We value the freedoms of individuals while at the same time we have community standards we have to enforce. We give young men and women weapons and the authority to make arrests and to use force when necessary. We have to have them understand the importance of what that means in a free and democratic society. I firmly believe that. I believe I have the skills to explain that to our fellow officers that are enforcing in our county. The other thing I do believe in is collaboration. We need to collaborate and, and, uh, with the other local law enforcement agencies to be cost effective, but it's not just cost effectiveness. It's more efficient law enforcement. We share information. If we work closer together with all the government agencies, we can provide effective law enforcement and make the community safer. The other thing we need to do is crime prevention. Crime prevention is essential to reducing crime. We need to continue to work with our youths. We need to find ways to protect the elderly. We need people just to, when I say educate, a lot of it may seem like common sense, but some people do get taken advantage of on the internet. And we need to work as, treat our people as neighbors and give them as much information as possible to, to move forward. Uh, I was told to talk for two minutes. I'm guessing I'm close. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to entertain them. If there's not, I'll be glad to sit down. <laughs> you have one, sir? Uh, what's your position on the Second Amendment? State in some oh, I have mine in my pocket right now. I was asked that question earlier, and I want to explain further. Someone asked me what I think about concealed carry and what that means. A few years ago, when it began, I didn't think it was going to work. I've been proven wrong. It is okay. I, I knew already that criminals aren't themselves as it is. But I was afraid there would be more injuries out there more deaths caused by accidental discharges, etc. I was wrong. I'm all for it, but I, I won't lie 10 years ago.